What suggestions do you have if you think you were a victim of a cryptocurrency scam? If you are a victim of a cryptocurrency scam, I am sorry to say, I don't think there is anything you can do. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong. If anybody has a, an option, maybe somebody commented already. But that's like the wild, wild west, if I'm not mistaken, which is why you need to have a cold storage wallet offline, a Ledger Nano X or S or whatever, um, where you can store your cryptos off the platform, right? And you can secure your passwords and things like that. So it, this is a learning curve for most people. I think we were hit for almost 5,000 by a Facebook prowler who had a very legitimate looking website. So here's the thing, when it comes to cryptocurrency, buying cryptocurrencies, um, you should not have to pay to get access to cryptocurrencies. So there is no, uh, there's no financial brokers that's going to say, you know, you have to get out of that mindset of I'm going to hire a financial advisor, I'm going to give him my money and he's going to go buy cryptocurrency. I don't think that's worth it. I, I think you could easily sign up for one of these platforms, crypto.com, Coinbase, Kraken, Binance, whatever it is, Voyager, Celsius. I mean, there's so many different ones. You find a credible platform that is maybe regulated and you can personally start buying cryptocurrency. No need to hire anybody at the moment because it's, it's really still all speculation at this point. Cryptocurrency is still speculation, right? So there isn't anything like concrete. Things could go south any minute. Things could go up, things can go down, as you've been seeing. So we want to be very cautious, not throw our life savings into it, balance it out. No more than 5% of your portfolio should go into any particular uh, 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 asset, right? I just attended the 10X Growth Conference here in Miami. Kevin O'Leary, Shark Tank, showed up and he was laying out how he invests. He never puts more than 20% of a sector of an industry in his portfolio. So he'll never have more than 20% of his net worth in the blockchain space or in stocks, foreign, uh, domestic. So, and then individual asset or individual stock, no more than 5%. So I, you know, I adopted a little bit of, of that in regards to cryptocurrency. I will not put more than 5% of my income in, uh, in cryptocurrency. That's my precaution. That means I'm willing to lose all of those dollars. Do I want to lose those dollars? No. So I buy stable coins. I buy the Bitcoin and the Ethereum. I've been playing around with the Cardanos and some other alt coins that might shoot up. And I kind of diversify it, but for the most part, no more than 5% of my net worth is going into that. I don't want to make, you know, I, I, I get all the hype, but I'm not trying to lose money here. I'm trying to make money. Currently using BlockFi to collateralize my crypto, taking out 50% LTV, use it to velocitize my personal debt and invest it to acquire more crypto, thinking of funding whole life next thoughts. That is pretty cool. Um, I think borrowing in the crypto space is going to change the game. So like on crypto.com, they just notified me that I could take out a 1% loan right now for 50% of what I have in, in, in crypto currencies, right? So let's say I got 50 grand in crypto. I could take out 25 grand in collateral, 1%. And if I had debt, if I had a $25,000 car and it was charging me 7%, <laughs> I'd pay off that car today, leveraging my cryptocurrency. And they're gonna charge me 1% in, 
and you understand that cryptos fluctuate, right? Goes up and down. Shoot, by the time I start paying myself back and the, the crypto, I never lose the value of the crypto. I don't have to sell the crypto. It stays. I don't lose anything. It'll go up and down, yeah, right? It'll go up and down. But I'm pretty confident, especially with Bitcoin and whatnot, that thing will go up. So whatever I pay in interest, 1% is nothing, nothing. So I like that.